Hey, what's going on, guys? So today we're talking about the best selling cards, five dollars or less for Yu-Gi-Oh! So Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. If you do enjoy this content, let me know by clicking that like button and subscribe button. Let's jump into it super duper fast already though. Um, I do want to mention this guy over here. I think the safest bet you could ever make is on support for this card. Uh, Blue Eyes Tyrant Giants Battle of Chaos. Has this even come out yet? Uh, I think, oh it just came out. Okay. Dope, dope, dope. So, hey. There must be fusion summons or special summon from your extra by tributing a Blue Eyes White Drago. Shout out TCG player. Uh, equipped with a fusion monster. Interesting. Unaffected by trap cards or effects. That's actually not that bad. Uh, this card can attack all monsters once each. Once per turn, at the end of the damage step, if this card battle, target a trap card in your graveyard, place it in your spell and trap zone. So it's obviously not very good right uh 3400 attack is fun um it loses to fissure uh, or smashing ground um and it's obviously not that good of a monster um and it has been going down in price but the thing is is like cards like this like look at the what blue eyes jet dragon like cards like this like they don't and I'm trying to find an example, because a lot of these are from Battle of Chaos, right? And and you knew the Battle of Chaos cards, those are going to be good, but um, look at a card like this. Like, this is not a good card. Like, it's okay for Blue Eyes, but it's not really that good of a card. <laughs> like... The thing is, is like a lot of these cards, like White Stone of Agents and Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon and Bingo Machine Go, Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon, um, TMS the United Dragon, Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, the card that got us here, Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon. Even though they're not good on a competitive level in any way, shape or form, on a casual level, at a local level and in certain game states against certain decks um you, you could find yourself in a position where you could get wins with this card I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example off the top of my head but um like salomon great for example that's a deck that um I, I showcase a lot on this channel uh salomon great doesn't do super well against this card specifically like obviously getting this card out might be a bit of an issue against salomon great but if you're able to I don't really see, I mean, obviously there's Access Code Talker, right? Um, and the thing is, that's the thing is too, like, Access Code Talker kind of, like, hard counters all Blue Eyes cards. Um, but I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to beat up on Blue Eyes right now. It's actually the opposite. It, it, it's, it's a well that just keeps on giving. Because even Dark Magician, if we just go right back into Battle of Chaos, um, this isn't what I wanted to go to. If we go right back into that, though, and we'll see the Dark Magician stuff, too. Dark Magician also has that effect where, like, a lot of Dark Magician related stuff, $165 Ultra, that's pretty crazy. crazy. Um, that makes sense, though. The Dark Magician is that expensive. But we see, like, a card like Magician Souls was really expensive for a very long time. Um, and obviously, I can't really find a Dark Magician card right now. But the point that I'm trying to make Dark Magician, uh, Blue Eyes. They're not, they've never really been good. Like, I know Blue Eyes won Worlds a while ago. That was just, like, a weird circumstance where that came up. If you put that deck against, like, any other Worlds deck, it just doesn't really hold up. But they are fun, first off. Um, and they're very, like, anime-related decks, right? And that's that's the main thing, right? Like, there's, there's a, a, a lot of people get confused uh, in thinking that, Yu-Gi-Oh! is only for the top 5 percentile. Like, the top 5% of people who, one, play the game competitively, and two, play the game competitively well, and three, have, uh, like, a resume to back that up. You know what I mean? Like, not only do they play the game competitively, which means they want the most optimized deck at the most optimized version of it, they play the game competitively well, which means they know how to utilize the cards that they're going to get, but they also know, they also can back that up. Like, they have YCS tops. They have YCS wins. They have regional wins. They're always winning locals. Like, players like that don't buy cards like Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon. 
But those aren't the only people that play Yu-Gi-Oh. And there are other people who just play Yu-Gi-Oh just to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and a lot of people, too, even those people have, like, fun decks that they like to have, or, like, Blue Eyes decks that they like to have. And, and Blue Eyes Tyrant Dragon could fit right in there. And it's always, 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 always going to be a safe bet. And even the Dictator of D is in here as well. Right, um, we are seeing DDD Divisor King Dismay. I'm not gonna click on it, it's another Battle of Chaos cards. It's just interesting, um, uh, that you know, DDD is starting to see you know, new support. People are kind of raising their eyebrow, like, could it possibly uh, for me? DDD is always kind of in the same spot where it's a really high skill cap, um, and, and the reward just doesn't it doesn't merit it. Like, Virtual World's got a high skill cap, at least in my opinion, um, and it's got a significantly better ceiling. Uh, and then Sword Soul doesn't have as high of a skill cap, especially the pure version with um, Phoenix Enforcer. And um, it's got a significantly higher ceiling, right? So you can either like send Fractal, send Kit, send Nerval, um, and then play that deck. Or you can do whatever it is that DDD looks like in 2022, right? But it is interesting to note, one of the best-selling cards is here. And we got to talk about this card, right? This is now the third time I've seen this card. And... All versions of Riot Geki are flying off the shelf. Let's actually go like this for this. So the cheapest version. How in the world? 3, 6, 9, 12. 14 versions of Riot Geki. The cheapest version is... Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't think it was this one. I don't know why that's the... F I don't know why this market price is $1.95. Maybe this card just got bought out. That's the only thing that makes sense. Um, the cheapest version. It's not this one either. Because uh, this market price is 247 uh, That's not it. It's this one. Um, it's the structure deck one, right? Yeah. So the cheapest version is the structure deck one. Um, and it's selling for $2.90. It's kind of crazy, right? Like, it's kind of crazy. This card goes to three. And we see what happens. I just wanted to click on this because I've been talking about this thing for a while. Um, I'm curious to see where this card is at 646 oh yeah that's this is going to be 650 for a while this is going to be 650 or less for a while um but even still you're talking about right now uh, let me see where the structure deck is at um 12 dollars is the structure deck three and then you get three copies of a two dollar and fifty cent card we do the math at 750 um you get a six dollar card right and I mean, honest, dark the dark the place that a dark ruler no more, um, uh, it, it almost gets you there. That's gonna get you to eighteen. Um, if it's just six dollars, six fifty, that gets you to nineteen fifty. On top of the seven fifty, that's twenty seven dollars. Um, and then this right here, uh, let's just see what the veilers are at. Cause it said two dollars. Yeah, it's two ninety. Right, so three dollars. So nine dollars. Uh, plus the 27, if you're staying with me here. 36 bucks um, for a playset of all three of these cards. And these, I believe these are the cheapest versions of these cards. I know it's the cheapest version of Red Geki because we just did that. I know it's the cheapest version of Dark Ruler No More. But let me see if it's the cheapest version of Valor. And there we go. And it's one of the cheaper ones. Okay, it's cheaper than that. It's cheaper than that. It's, it's the point that I'm trying to make is that okay, if you want a playset of Raigeki, Dark Ruler No More, and Valor, you can either spend over thirty six dollars for a playset, right? Because this looks to be the cheapest version of. Valor 2029. I didn't see any other version. Did you see any other versions just now? Under three dollars, right? So 290, it's basically three dollars though, anyway. So you could spend three dollars on a playset of Valor. You could spend three to you can spend three dollars on a playset of Raigeki. Uh, excuse me, on a play three dollars each on a playset, right? So nine dollars, nine dollars. Right, and then you can spend six dollars. We'll round down this time on a play set of for six dollars each on a play set of Dark Ruler No More. Right, so nine dollars, nine dollars, eighteen dollars, 
18 and 18 is 36. So you can spend $36, around $36, uh, before taxes, before shipping and all that jazz, for a place that a Regeki, Dark Ruin, or more Valor. Or you can spend $36 and some change, obviously. So we're looking at like 30 it's, it's Okay. It's going to be $40 for a play, these play sets anyway. So you can either do that and just get these cards. Or you can get a, the, a play set of this. And you can get Twin Twisters, you can get D-Barrier, you can get Warnings, and you can get an archetype. And I'm going to post the video at some point this week. Um, it's Super Bowl Sunday today, so it probably won't come out today. But um, you get a fun deck. Like, I've been messing around with the deck. Like, it's not amazing. Um, and I, and I kind of wished the ratios uh, for the Ultra Rares were different. And I kind of also wish that, like... I mean, we got the tokens, which is cool. But I kind of wish, like, we got, like, maybe three tokens and a Link Monster. Instead of uh, four tokens and no Link Monster. Um, but it's kind of interesting. And it's not... Going back to what I was literally just talking about with Blue Eyes and Dark Magician. It's not like every single deck you have to play has to be the best deck literally you've ever played ever. Sometimes it's fun to mess around with a deck like that and just see. And that's why I got that structure deck in the first place. Was because I knew I could get a playset of Dark Ruler No More, a playset of Regeki, a playset of Valor. And that was going to pay for it. And I got that before Regeki came back to 3. And Regeki comes back to 3 and now all of a sudden I got all of those on a discount. If I wanted to play a set of Regeki, Valors, and Dark Ruin or more, I was going to have to drop 40 bucks anyway. And now you can drop 40 bucks, get the structure deck, and move on with your life. And if you can find that structure deck, because I found the structure deck for $10, just full transparency. I found it for $10 at a locals. If you can find it at a locals, or at Walmart, or on sale, like, and I know it's it, the sales don't happen a lot at Walmart and Meyer because of, uh, or Target because of the um, pandemic, but you could, you could, it's been out for a while. It might even be on sale. You might even be able to get it for like eight or nine dollars if you just spend a little bit extra time, like shopping around when you're at Walmart, going to the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh section, seeing if it's there, seeing if it's on sale, or seeing if it's just there for ten dollars, right? Getting it for ten dollars, getting a place set for thirty. Now you're getting something that's at bare minimum worth like thirty-five dollars. Place sets of Regeki, Dark Ruin, or more invaders for thirty bucks. Right, so Spirit Charmer Structure Deck, I've been on it for a minute, and it's, it's paying dividends again, and a big reason, obviously, is because it has Red Gecky in it, but also Dark Ruin No More, Valor, and a lot of other things as well. Now, this is interesting to me. The reason this is interesting to me is because Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, I don't see where this is seeing play. I don't, you guys can let me know because there's eight copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. And I've talked about this version before a lot on the Penny Stock Market Watch. So I don't want to talk about it too much. But the reason I talked about this version is one, it's an ultra rare, right? Ultra rares are not rares. They, they don't look ugly. They're not super rares and they look kind of cool. Like ultra rares are pretty good looking. They're not like secret rares, obviously. But there is, there's a secret and the ultimate, which are on a completely different level. And then there's all of these that are like, three to five dollars right like all six of these are three to five dollars because I, I i know the market price is 285 and there's a heavy plate for 250 and a korean version for a dollar 49 or two dollars and 49 cents but this is three to five dollars right and if i had to guess all of these are ultra rares or gold rares or you know not like not secret or ultimate rares not collector rares, not like a great rarity but this has an alternate art and i've talked about this being an alternate art before and i know this has the most listings right now and i think that's what's holding the line but i think over time i've talked about this before i just want to say it again over time i could see this card going up in value this version of this card because it is the alternate art and a lot of times people do like that version of it um they like that they're just, just it's unique that's a different one right you can have the ulti that looks cool you can have the secret that looks cool i have the alternate art right and the biggest thing though i wanted to talk about is that this card in general is really high in value and i don't see why 
Is it something that Phantom Rights does? Is it, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is that's causing that card to go up in value. You guys can let me know in the comments down below. But I genuinely am confused. Um, because, honestly, it's like, okay, this just came off the ban list. Blue Eye stuff, and it just came out. This is Solemn Strike, and it just came out. Uh, it's Tri Brigade stuff. Um, just came off the ban list. This just came out, 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 just came out. Just came out. Uh, just came out, just came out, just came out. Like, most of these just came out. Like, Destrudo, obviously, just came off the ban list. But, like, everything else. And now here we are already with the Veilers, too. But Veiler makes sense. Like, there's a lot of good choke points that Veiler hits. I don't see where the value is coming from for Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Um... But the thing is with this card, I do want to say this, uh, is that it is only ever been okay, if that makes sense. Like, that's the worst it's ever gotten. Like, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not that good, and sometimes it's okay. And right now, I, I, see, I view it as just okay. I don't really see the choke points. Um, I guess it can hit a choochie. Um, it can hit a boot sector launch. I'm, I'm trying to think of like a meta. Like I did, I don't, I, I didn't realize, I don't think Phantom Knights gets hurt by this card. Maybe it hits the burning of his link. Is that a big thing? Or maybe it's like a utopia card. I, I, I you guys let me know why all copies of Ghost Ogre are th over $3. I, cause I genuinely don't know. Um, but overall, I think that this version of that this is reason too why like of there's six versions of ghost ogre under five dollars and there's only one version of ghost ogre that's in the top 24 best selling cards right and if we just go a little bit further now we go to the next 24 see if we find another ghost ogre right so it's not in the top 50 there's not another one in the top 50, right? Because a lot of times people will see, well, that one has the most listings. So that one has to be the least valuable one because of supply and demand. Yes and no, right? Okay, so here we are. So on page four, between 73 and 76, so it's probably like 80 something. I'm not doing the math. Okay, okay I guess we'll count it out, right? We'll count it. So 73, 73, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78. Uh, so 9, 8, 81, 8, 3, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. The 88th most selling card is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, the maximum gold version, the premium gold rare version. It's the 86th best selling card under $5. And the 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16th best selling card is the dual devastated version, right? Like, yes, supply and demand is very important. And obviously, the supply. I think this is the Ghost Ogre that has the most out, too. I'd, I'd venture to say, right? Yeah, because it's like 26, 28, 57, right? Interestingly enough, the one with the second most is this one, right? And this one just got bought out. This one just got bought out. These two are looking like they're on the way. Now, how close is this one to a buyout? There's 94 copies here. Um, I probably don't have to go far to find another double digit one. I mean, that person had seven. Uh, this 2017 from the gamer's choice at $3.94. Um, so that'll be holding the line for a while. There's 82 listings as of me making this video. It started at 74. So the supply is going to hurt this, right? Because there are a lot of dual devastators. But, 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 there's a reason that this is still, even with the supply that high, that should even be more telling as to how valuable this card is. That the supply is as high as it is for this card, but it's still just as valuable as every other version of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, other than the Ulti and the Secret Rare. But let me know what you guys think. Why is Ghost Ogre an ex a $3 card at all values except for the expensive ones? Let me know in those comments down below. Make sure you guys click that like button and the subscribe button for even more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Let me know in those comments what type of videos you guys want me to be doing next. But most importantly of all, have a good day.
What's going on guys? So the easiest way to support my channel isn't by buying some weird thing that I'm talking about in my video or by clicking on some weird advertisement, but it's just buying directly from Cards of Connor at TCGplayer.com. There will actually be a link available in the description and it's going to have all of your cards at or below market price value, right? So if you see cardsofconnor.com, it might not say verified, but that's okay. I have 100% positive feedback on all of my sales so far, so please, the best way to support Hot Dog Flexor is to shop from Cards of Connor at tcgplayer.com.